How's it going folks? It's Rob here. I get asked a lot of the same questions in regards to different parts of the build for our aquaponics system and also how we run it. So I thought I might start to post a couple of uh, videos just answering some of the more frequently asked questions and inquiries. Now today I'm doing bell siphons. For some reason a lot of bell siphons are being built at the moment. I think it's because uh, you folks in the northern hemisphere are coming into spring. So I thought yeah we'll have a crack at bell siphons today. Before we start though a huge thanks Nick needs to go out to Afnan from Afnan's Aquaponics in Malaysia. Uh, this bell siphon and also a lot that you'll see on YouTube, on different blogs and websites and forums is based on Afnan's design. So thank you very much, mate. I've actually posted a link in the description that covers Afnan's um, schematics and also Bernoulli's principle. So check that out if you're interested. Now the little bell I've been making up is great for smaller backyard beds and is pretty much well comprised of three different components. You have a shroud, with some holes in it that keeps the media from fouling up the bell siphon. You have a bell that helps initiate the siphon and stands over the standpipe and then you have a standpipe which regulates the height of the water in the grow bed and also helps deliver water out of the grow bed into a reservoir tank or whatever below. I haven't been that articulate explaining um, how a bell siphon works in a flood and drain grow bed previously. Actually confused a few folks so I thought what I'd do is make up a bit of animation that'll hopefully help you folks out. Uh, I'm not covering Bernoulli's principle and all that sort of thing. Um, you'll find that in Afna Afnan's um, blog page. Link in the description below. So to begin with the bed is slowly filled with water that enters via the hose or the pipe. Water passes through the slits in the meteor shroud under the gaps that are cut into the base of the bell and the bell chamber fills with water and the air that's in there is forced out via the standpipe. Once the water level reaches the top of the standpipe, it cascades over and forms a water lock and a siphon is initiated. The siphon moves all the water from the bell out the pipework in the base of the grow bed into a tank below. Now the water keeps running through the siphon until the water level of the grow bed reaches the top of the gaps cut in the base of the bell. Air is drawn into the bell chamber, breaking the siphon and allowing the bed to fill with water again and the cycle just repeats itself over and over. So I hope that little explanation helped you folks out. What we'll do now is we'll go over to a little system that I've been working on. We'll take a couple of measurements and I'll walk you through the process of making up the components. So we're just in the grow bed here. The couple of measurements we need to take is pretty much all well the depth of the bed. So in this case it's 300 mil or around about a foot deep. Now we need to allow a little bit of space up the top here uh, to stop the media rolling out. I'm going to give it one inch or 25 mil. And then also too, I like to allow another 25 mil or another inch between the top of the standpipe where the um, high tide mark, so to speak, will be in the bed and the top of the media. The reason behind that is if you have nutrient rich water coming to the top of your grow bed, uh, it can encourage algal growth. So it's just a good idea to have it a little bit lower. So I know this bed being 300 mil deep um, to 25 mil for the little lip and 25 mil for the dry zone, um, I need to make the standpipe 250 mil or roughly 9.85 inches I think. So we'll start off with the shroud. It's the shroud's job to pretty much will stop any of the media getting into the bell siphon and gumming up the works while still letting water come through these holes here. Now this one here I've decided to go with the 100 mil or the 4 inch stormwater pipe mainly because I can get my big mitt down there and adjust any fittings that need to be you know fiddled with. This one here also has a modified end cap to stop any debris falling into the top of it and another one on the base here that's held on by the bulkhead fitting. So the hole in the end cap is 32 millimeters or an inch and a quarter the same size as the hole that goes through the grow bed to take the bulkhead fitting this here pretty much will just keeps the shroud in place I've had in a previous barrel ponic build someone grabbed the shroud and pull it out and media got in and just made a whole big mess so I like to include these little caps to keep it in position from now on so this one here has slits cut into the side I have used the drill option before and drilled a series of holes through the side so to cut out the slits in the shroud was very easy I just popped three little dots on the bottom rim of the pipe then laid it on its side came up 30 mils to make allowance for this little end cap here and then every 10 mils or about 0.4 of an inch I just popped another little dot and that became the mark where I dropped the saw on it to cut out the little slits now 
With the drop saw, I put on eye protection and also ear protection. This plastic can be very brittle, so the last thing you want to do is just twist it a little bit, uh, let, have it splinter off and hit you in the eye with a piece. So eye protection's a must when working with this stuff here. Now, if you've got a depth gauge on your drop saw, it definitely does help. Mine didn't come with one, so I was able to dodgy up some of the clamps as a makeshift depth gauge. So as you can see, after I did the first nine, I decided to add uh, three lots of four more just around above them, just to allow good water flow into the bell siphon. The next job was to drill the drainage holes in the end cap base. I secured the end cap onto the base of the shroud using three screws. These screws just help hold it in place, so when you push the drill through, the two of them don't separate. Just makes them match up later on. For the holes, I chose a drill size that wouldn't let the smallest clay ball I could find come through, so that way you're not going to end up with any clay coming into the base of your shroud. Once the holes were drilled, I removed the screws and put three marks around the shroud and on the end cap. Um, they'll just help me line up the holes when we install it into the grow bed. To make the cap for the top of the shroud, I basically cut two bits of the side wall out of a 100mm end cap, just leaving two 50mm sections on either side, and that just lets it sit loosely on the top here but doesn't grab on and it's enough to stop any leaf matter or anything getting in there and fouling up the bell siphon. So on to the standpipe. Now the standpipe's pretty straightforward. All these parts here I picked up from the local big box hardware store. So at the top here we have a 25mm to 20mm reducer or 1 inch to um, 3 quarter inch reducer. Into that we have a 20mm pipe that runs down to a 20 to 25mm adapter bush. Now that's just to allow this 20mm pipe to be pushed into a 25mm valve socket which is then screwed into a 25mm bulkhead fitting and that's pretty much well where the bottom of the grow bed sits there. So pretty basic setup. So the reason for this reducer at the top of the standpipe is that it lets in a larger volume of water than the pipe, the smaller diameter pipe would. So that just makes the uh, siphon initiate more efficiently. Um, I used to play around with just straight standpipes but I had problems with the siphon and initiating and then breaking off so that's why I pretty much well went with Afnan's design. To work out the length of the pipe you need to give you a certain length standpipe. It's pretty basic. Uh, one thing I need to take into consideration is the two millimeters of end cap that the shroud will be sitting in and will be sitting under here. So the basic measurements I use is from the base of this little coupling here to the edge of this bush which is 70 mil and then this fitting here which is roughly 60 mil again. So that gives me a total of 130 millimeters of standpipe already there with these fittings. Now I need to work out how how long this bit needs to be. So left over from 250 we have 120 but what I need to do is work out how much pipe goes into these fittings. Easiest way to do that is to grab a pen, just draw a couple of lines on there, pull the fittings apart and then measure the leftover pipe. So I know this side here is around about 15 mil and this side here about 20 mil which gives me 35 mil all up. Add that on to the 120 mil that I was left over after subtracting these fittings and I know I need a standpipe here the length of 155 millimetres to give me the overall length I want. So it's all pretty basic, it's pretty easy but I thought I'd just um, run you through that. Um, the other way to do it is just put the pipe in, make sure it's longer, snip bits off and until you get down to the right level. Um, the ruler is just a little bit more efficient and you don't lose as much pipe work. This little two-piece unit here can be replaced by this little coupling. Now the big box stores here, the two big ones, you Aussies know who I'm talking about, they used to stock this one in their plumbing aisle, they've taken it off the shelf though. What it does, it screws into the bulkhead fitting but this hole here will take the 20 mil directly, no you know little adapter needed. You can still get this at plumbing supplies, I mean they still sell them, it's just that the big box stores have decided not to stock them anymore so that might be something you look into getting. Um, I just thought I'd go with this just to show you what was readily available. So if you're not really interested in um, having a base plate for your shroud, you can pretty much well do away with this bulkhead fitting. I, I like to use it with the shroud base because it's got a little bit of extra meat on the side there. Just like It just holds things nicely into place. What you can use is still this fitting and you can get yourself a faucet adapter. Now that's pretty much well threaded on one side and slip fitting on the other. You just need to make sure that when you drill the hole for this threaded section to go through the bed, it needs to be pretty close to this thread because there's not really a lot of meat there like the bulkhead fitting. Then all you need to do is underneath the bed pop a washer or an o-ring just on like that. 
screw it on and away you go you're laughing now as for attaching pipework to this bit here what I like to do is wrap a little bit of white Teflon tape around the pipe and then just run through a 316 stainless steel screw and I find it holds it in place if you want to glue it by all means glue it I just find this is easy to work with I can zap that out and pull the uh, bits and pieces apart and use them elsewhere or service the bed just gives me extra options now another thing you could use is is a uni seal so all you need to do is pretty much well drill the right size hole in the base of your grow bed sit the uni seal in and then just push through a small section of pipe I'd probably still go with a 25 mil even though we got a 20 mil stand pipe just allows for um, greater air and water flow through the system so on the other side what I would do is I'd pretty much well pop on some Teflon tape like I mentioned before then pop on an elbow straight away and zap through a 316 stainless steel screw that just makes it all nice and watertight and then from there all you need to do is if I can pull this standpipe out pop another one of those reducers on the top there and then pop your standpipe in and away you go you're laughing just to let you folks in Australia know I'm selling these uniseals for the time being so if you want to click on the little link there it'll take you to a price list page and also give you info on ordering Onto the bell for the siphon, very easy build. I've used 65 millimeter pipe or two and a half inch pipe and to cut it to length, all I've done is measured from the top of this bulkhead fitting because this pipe sits nicely on top of the bulkhead fitting there. I've measured up here 30 millimeters past the end of the stand pipe and it's come to 270 millimeters and just cut off a section of pipe there. Now this end cap, it fits on very tightly. In the past I have had to glue on end caps so that, that's a pretty basic process if you've never done it before. You just get some primer, wipe around the pipe itself and the inside of the fitting. That just removes any grease or dust or um, anything that might stop the glue from bonding. Then give it a nice even coat of glue on both the cap and the pipe and then you just pop the cap on, apply pressure for 15 seconds or so and you're laughing. This one here though I don't need to worry about gluing it up. The cuts I made in the end here were around about 15 millimeter deep. The reason I've done that is I want the water level once the siphon is broken to be fairly low in the grow bed. I think it's a good idea to try and get as much water cycling through um, every time the bed floods then drains. So if you had it up here you'd pretty much will have you know probably two inches of water left in the bottom of the bed so yeah down near the bottom now to mark these little feet out I've gone and made a little template up here just gone around the pipe and marked them measured up the 15 mil drawn a line across and then just cut out these little sections that I don't need very easy any bits that haven't got quite cut through I've just finished off with my utility knife and then just cleaned off any swarf that's been left behind and that pretty much all there yeah, is the bell siphon itself very basic and very easy so this is the little chop and flip jobby that the bell siphon's going into I'll post a clip on this one at a later date uh, we've got the water inlet in the far corner and I want the bell siphon set up over in this corner that way the water gets to saturate the whole bed and be drawn over to the furthest point from the inlet just something to think about when it comes time to drill the hole this one here I have to make sure that it's in far enough that it's not going to come down and hit this cage work here and also too that any supports aren't going to get in the way of the little nut that sits on the underside and holds the, um, the bulkhead fitting in place so just something to think about before you start drilling grow beds and then making a bit of a stuff up so now to install in the bell pretty easy I've already zapped through a 32 mil or an inch and a quarter hole through the base of the bed so the only tool I'm going to be using of these pliers just to make sure the bulkhead's nice and tight so we'll start off with the um, bulkhead first of all what we want to do is pop a washer over the hole and then we'll pop the um, tray down bulkhead goes through and then on the underside the lock nut so I'm just going to thread on the elbow that goes onto the base of the bulkhead fitting now. It's just got a little bit of pipe stuck into the end, but we'll worry about that later. I like to thread this on now because as you're tightening it up, it actually loosens off the nut on the bulkhead fitting. Last thing I want to do is, you know, set this all up, you know, get meter in the bed and whatnot, screw this on and then, you know, loosen off your bulkhead fitting. The other bonus is that you don't need thread tape with it. So I'm just going to grab these pliers now and do up the nut. Next to go in is just the standpipe. I don't worry about adding thread tape to it. And then the shroud. Just going to line him up with these little marks down here. 
But I'm not worrying about putting the little screws back through here. There's no reason for them to be in there. The shroud will, is in there nice and firmly and won't come out. So I suppose we better put the bell in. So that's pretty much all done. We'll just fill the bed up now with a load of water just to make sure that this isn't leaking. It'll also give you a chance to look at how the siphon operates. Um, I have a feeling there may be a bit of a leak from there, but just don't pay any attention to that. So we've got a little bit of leaking around this bulkhead. No big issue though. Just tighten that up with the pliers. Uh, you can probably see over at the end cap there, a uh, fair bit of water dripping out of there. There's a little pressure valve um, just in the centre section of that cap. It's just to let gas escape from the IBC when it's full. So, yeah. Yeah, that just needs to be glued up with a bit of silicon, nothing to worry about. Any water you can see dribbling out of the pipe is probably due to the uh, bulkhead fitting and the valve socket not having a watertight seal. So it's no drama because I mean it's only going to drip into the fish tank anyway. So as you can see the water is about to go over there so we might just pop the bell on. So what we're going to see is a couple of drips and a trickle underneath the grow bed as water starts to go over the top of the standpipe and then within a couple of seconds it should start off into the full flow. Because there's no meter in this bed it's going to take quite a while for it to drain so we'll pop back once it's almost done. So it's almost time for the siphon to break. It might be a bit hard to hear though with all this water running underneath the bed. We'll see how we go though. There we go. Yeah, a little bit of a burp there. So that's pretty much all the complete cycle. One of the most common questions I get is how do I stop or start my bell siphon? Now it all pretty much all comes down to this little thing here, um, the flow rate into the bed. So with the Afnan I found that I haven't really had problems with siphons not initiating. I did have a few that didn't want to stop though. So the easiest way to get them to stop is to slow down your flow. That's why I like to have valves placed before the inlets to all my grow beds. I can just slow the flow down or speed it up as I need it. Just a little pointer there. It's something that you know I can't say quarter turn, whole turn or anything like that. You've just got to muck around with it yourself and see what works best for your grow bed. Um, the size of the grow bed and the size pipe you use and all that sort of thing also comes into play. So we might pop off now and have a look at one of these guys in action in the aquaponics system. So I just wanted to show you a comparable size bed and bell siphon in our aquaponics. We've got some ginger up the back, tie basil and some other bits and pieces. Down in here we have an inlet in this corner feeding in roughly 600 litres an hour. I think that's a bit conservative. Around the back here we have the bell siphon itself and it's feeding down into a 25 mil pipe that runs down into the sump tank. Now this bed here is fairly close volume of media wise to the one I've just set up. It takes 10 minutes to fill and it takes roughly three minutes for the bell siphon to drain it. So that just gives you some sort of an indication of um, how long a bed should take to fill and drain. So as you can see these little bell siphons are very easy to knock together and install into a system. Um, I have pretty much will consider them a plug and play component now. Uh, a little bit of initial tweaking and yeah they're right to go. I haven't had any issues with them since. So I hope this clip has helped you out some if you've just stumbled across it because you want to build a bell siphon or if you're just curious on how they work. If you did find it useful hit that subscribe button up there and you'll be sent an email if you check a little box every time I upload another clip on something we've built for the aquaponics or just something around the small little backyard farm here and you can come along and check out what's going on. I've also included a couple of playlists on the aquaponics there. Um, one on how the components are have been made and also one that's a sort of a vlog style just an evolution of the system that you might be interested in so check them out if you want um i will pretty much all leave it there though i do hope everyone is well and happy and i will catch you next weekend for another clip cheers folks just wanted to give you folks who stuck around a bit of a look at the aquaponic ginger there's two plants in this section and that one over the back there is looking very impressive i've never had it grow out of the media like that before Really looking forward to see what sort of a yield we get from these guys this year. Just over here next to me we have the third plant and it's doing rather well too. So I can't complain at all. Yeah I just noticed that too. Grasshopper skin.
little buggers. Cheers, folks. Have a great one.